What I decided to do, rather than getting larger shot, generally the larger the ragging, the more cons you get, and we're trying to get fewer cons. So last year after I got back from the big lost, I added a water inlet down here in the hutch. And the idea of that is to reduce the suction stroke pulling material down through the shot bed on the suction. So you add water there and that reduces that. Now all of this stuff is a balancing act. You don't want too many cons but you don't want to reduce the cons to the point that you're not picking up the small gold and especially the flower gold which tends to float pretty easily. So what we're going to do, what I've read suggests that you want a third of the water going in that flows across the bed and you want two thirds going in under the hutch. So I can control these individually down here and then overall I can, the overall water supply I can do with that valve right there. So, we're going to try that and see what that does. I don't think since I put that inlet on there, added it, that I've ever run the jig. So, we're going to try it and we'll see what happens. I'll be back. This is what it looks like without any feed going. I can't tell a great deal of difference in this and what we had before. I've got a little less shot in there. You can see a little shadowing from the baffles. But it looks like it's doing okay. This batch of material is just straight sand, which should be more difficult. So I'm going to give it a run. It takes about 15 or 20 minutes to run this, and I'll be back. It's obvious that there wasn't any improvement in that. So I'm not sure where to go from here. It seems to me that running dirty sand and this butt batch was almost all sand so we should have gotten a little more sand through and we did. But it looks like it pretty consistently is doing about a six to one reduction and I would have liked much more to have seen something like on the order of 50 to 1. And maybe that's unrealistic. I don't have any experience running jigs for gold, so though my jig works really, really well for gems, in that application I'm washing the gravel and getting all the silt out and I'm running nothing smaller through the jig than about number 10 or number 12. So it, it isn't really an apples to apples comparison, but um, I'm not sure where to go from here. I don't do much gold prospecting, so the biggest reason I was doing all of this was just for information for people that wanted to run jigs for gold to see how well it worked or didn't. And I'm sure there's a lot more things going on here that could be changed to improve this. I don't see it improving past maybe 10 or 15 to 1 reduction, which would probably be uh, something like you would see on a rougher jig where your initial your initial reduction and then you run the material through again um, to clean it. In fact you may end up running the material you may do your roughing application and then run the material through two or three more times to keep refining what you get doing a hutch clean out after each run and then run that material through again and eventually you'd probably get it down to a pretty small component that would be heavy in gold and 
the other heavy minerals. So that's it. I don't know what else I can do. I'll see you guys later. After the last segment, I had an idea. thought maybe I'd do a video that would be of interest. I, what I was thinking of is here's a 100 mesh classifier. Now this is really, you can see through this stuff, but obviously this is really pretty small. And I thought what I would do is wash my material through that to get rid of everything smaller than a hundred mesh. And, and then to make it even more interesting, here I have some 300 mesh, or what I think is 300 mesh tungsten. And tungsten and gold have nearly identical specific gravities. And as you can see, I'm going to turn the vibratory classifier on. As you saw, the tungsten went straight through that screen, just like you know what through a goose. And there the tungsten is on a piece of paper. And I thought maybe what I'd do is put like a half a teaspoon of tungsten after I've cleaned the material of silt. And I thought I'd put a half a teaspoon of tungsten in there. And we'll see if the jig recovers it. Um, I thought that might make kind of an interesting test. So I'm going to get some things set up here and then we'll be back. Boy, that stuff is really fine. I don't know if you even wanted to mess with gold that fine unless you had a whole bunch of it. I'll be back in a bit. After attempting to de-slime that sand that I was using yesterday, I found out that about 70% of it was smaller than 100 mesh. And it would have taken half the day to end up with a five gallon bucket of that material with the hundred mesh cleaned out of it. So, I looked around the shop and I had this material, which is, I don't know exactly what it is, but it's clean river sand from out here in the snake. And I think it's been mostly de-slime. There may still be a little bit in there, but I'm going to run that. And we'll see how it does. We've got about, I don't know, four gallons of it here. And we'll see what kind of reduction we get. Back later.